It's us again. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise welcome, the Lord. Welcome to Inspire Life Ministry. My name is Lachelle Bryant, pastor of Inspire Life Ministry, pastoring with my husband, Kofi Bryant Sr. Amen. And we welcome you to another broadcast of Bible study where we study the Bible. Bible, that's right. I like that, Pastor. We do study the Bible on Bible study. Amen. The um, website address is www.ilm247.org. We are so glad that you joined us. We hope that you have your Bibles. And for those who have been going along with us for this series, we know you have your journals, your notebook, a piece of paper or something. Let's get ready for business. God bless you and thank you for being here. Amen, amen. Let's get ready for business. Praise oh, I Lord. forgot one thing. What did you forget? Tell us how you doing. How y'all doing? How you doing, Periscope? How are you, Facebook? And how are you? I hear you too. <laughs> hey, how you doing, Pastor? I'm doing well, Pastor. How are you? I'm doing wonderfully well. Thanks for asking. Good. I'm still growing up, by the way. Same here. Amen, amen. Well, again, we are excited. We are very, very excited to amen. have you in front of us this evening for our Bible study. Amen? Now, let me tell you, first of all, right away, this is one of those messages where you will have to go back on YouTube, www ilm247.org, pick our YouTube channel, and go back on YouTube and replay this message with a notepad of okay. some kind, a note device, a, a note-taking device of some kind. It's just that needy. Amen. Amen. And it's not something that you can retain, I don't think, right away here and now. Amen. Amen. But, and so that said, I must move fast. And so I Apologize for the limited time and the speed of my speech, uh, but again, I want you to go back and play it. It's just that this is the end of our series, and I have to get everything I got to get out now. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. And so, again, welcome again. This is our vaccination series, our vaccine series. We wanted you to do your vision for 2021. We wanted you to establish who you were in 2020, and we wanted you to establish who you want to be yes. in 2021. Amen? Amen. And so in doing so, just to recap some things for you, we I want to title this message, as you are listening to me, as you are looking at me and listening to me, I want to title this message, Snatch Back Your Year. Amen? Snatch Back Your Year. What do I mean by that? I'll give you an illustration. My beautiful wife is going to play the not-so-beautiful. Uh, she's going to play the devil right now, okay? So you know she don't look like no devil, but she's going to play one. Stand in front of the this camera, Miss Bryant. Amen. Amen. Stand in front of the camera. Oh, sorry. There you go. And so this is mine, what she has in her hand. Now, what she has in her hand represents a few things. It represents my wealth, okay? It represents my health. You follow me? It represents my frame of mind. It refer represents my history, my destiny. You follow me? It represents my perspective of life. It represents my specific goals. Huh? It represents my family. It represents everything that I want. But guess who has got it? She's got it. And in this illustration, she represents the devil. What I'm simply saying to you and I, is to do this. Take the word of God and snatch back your year. See, Amen. 2020, some of you all feel like that year belonged to the devil. You feel like you've taken so many L's, losses mm -hmm. in your life that you just cannot conceive how you can be victorious in this 2020 season. But I submit unto you that you are not a loser that you have not failed. Hold this, Miss Bryant. The enemy just simply has what is yours. You follow me? Now, if what you had was gone down the drain and you have it no more, then that's a cause for disruption in your emotion. But I'm saying to you that the devil has What's yours? He has it right now. He has the 2020 version of who you are right now. 
What I'm saying to you is let's together learn how to snatch back your year. Amen? Amen. And own 2021. Thank you for that illustration. Oh, absolutely. I appreciate that. Now, just to recap briefly. We asked nine questions. If you're following us for the first time, we asked nine questions. Nine questions we were asking from the perspective of the future ultimate you. <clears throat> okay? The future ultimate you. Now, what we discovered was nine questions. The future of who you are. All right? Romans 4, chapter... Romans 4. Amen? Romans 4, chapter 16. Turn to Romans 4, 16. Romans 4, chapter 16. And we're going to begin reading briefly at verse number. I said that wrong. Romans 4, chapter 4, verse 16. Amen. Verse 16. And we're going to begin reading at verse 16. Give each other the special greeting of God's people. All the churches that belong to Christ, their greetings to you. Brothers and sisters, I want you to be very careful of those who cause arguments and hurt people's faith by teaching things that are against what you have learned. Stay away from them. People are like People are not serving our Lord Christ. They are only pleasing themselves. They use fancy talk and say nice things to fool those who don't know about the evil. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I beg you take care of me. Amen. Thank you so much. And what I wanted to point out about that is... I asked you to look at the future you, the future you. So he's admonishing us to be like Christ and not like the teachings of the world. So in my will of life here last week, I discovered, I mean, I'm sorry, we discovered that we want to fashion ourselves after the word of God. So I asked you some questions. I wanted to know the ultimate vision for your life. Periscope, Facebook, answer this question for me. What is your ultimate vision for your life? Turn to Proverbs 23, verse number 7. The question is, I asked you, what was the ultimate vision that you came up with for your life? People on YouTube have been watching, family. Now, again, I believe that from the perspective in which I'm coming from, is calling those things that are not as though they were. So I'm asking you to reconceive the ultimate you, the you that you're not right now. Right. You follow what I'm saying? Yes, but who you want to become. Who you want to become. Yeah, amen. Okay? Who you want to become. Now, who you are, we already represented in a will of life over here, in which I'll demonstrate later. But Proverbs 23. Verse 7. Yes. I'm reading from the English version. And it reads, don't ruin your health trying to get rich. If you are smart, you will give it up. In the blink of an eye, money can disappear as if it grew wings and flew away like a bird. Mm -hmm. My, my, my. And read it from uh, King James Version. Proverbs chapter 23, Old Testament from the King James Translation. Verse 7, it reads, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, said he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. Amen, amen. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. So the Bible is telling us in that version, So as a man thinketh, so is he. So I asked you, who was the ultimate you? See, how you're thinking about yourself right now, so are you. And so what we're doing is discovering the ultimate you. The best you that you could ever be. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, yeah, what I want to say about um, what you just said, when you think about that verse and when you read that verse, it's so true. The word says, so as a man thinketh, is he? So we, it's really imperative that we change our way of thinking 
and that our mind is renewed daily. All of and me. sometimes throughout the day. Hey, you said, can I get you to repeat that sometimes? <laughs> we need to renew our mind throughout the day. Amen. Yes, amen, amen, amen. Question number two, what was your ultimate purpose? That was the reason why you wanted the ultimate vision. Psalms 57. Psalms 57. We're going to begin reading at verse 2. Psalms 57, 2. Amen. And again, I'm using the easy um, translation. Go by King James. I'm oh, sorry. you want? Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm no problem. There you go. I'm reading from the King James translation, Psalms 57, beginning at verse 2, down to what verse 3? Just 2. Verse 2 reads, I will cry unto God most high, unto God that performeth all things for me. Mm -mm -mm. See, I'm asking you what's the ultimate purpose for your ultimate vision. Amen? Amen. The third question we asked you was, what was your identity? Who are you? Who, who are you? Right? And what do you stand for? Who are you and what do you stand for? Psalms 119. Psalms 119.9. You don't have to turn to all these scriptures. I'm just giving you something to consider. Because last week, we discovered that our will of life had to be governed not by our mentality only, but by the word of God. Amen? Amen. And so what I'm doing now is giving you these questions with the word of God involved inside of the question. You can come up with another scripture if you so choose. Amen? Right. If, as long as it matches what it's relating to as it relates to your will of life. Um, and even if you don't turn to, to the scriptures, I highly encourage that you write these scriptures down. Absolutely. It's important. It's necessary. Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Pastor. Psalms 119. Yes, verse 9. Verse 9. Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way? It's a question. By taking heed thereto according to thy word, King James translation. Take heed to the word. Who are you? Yeah. What does the word say that you are? Amen. Yeah. Question number four. What did you determine your code of conduct was? That is, the the what you stood for and what you hold dear, no matter what happens. Amen. Ephesians chapter six. Verse. Ephesians chapter six, verse eleven. And what did you determine your code of conduct with? Amen. And the word of God reads from the King James translation is what we're using on this evening. Ephesians New Testament chapter 6 verse 11 reads, Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Yes, yes. So I asked you what was your code of conduct? I'm going to ask you to be a soldier. Amen. I'm going to ask you to be a soldier in the army of the God. Lord. Yeah, and I'm going to ask you to put on your whole armor of God, your black breastplate of righteousness, Hallelujah. your helmet of salvation. I want you to shard your feet with the preparation of the gospel. Hallelujah. See, I asked you, what was your code of conduct? Meaning, who are you? What do you stand for? I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. Baby. Yeah, you're huh? sword, you're sword. Yes, sir. Word, yes, yes ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and so number five is, what did you determine your values and your rules were? What is the most important thing to you? Turn to Deuteronomy 6 if you have the time. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. Verse 5. Reading from the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. And the word of God reads, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy heart. Mike. Hallelujah, hallelujah. See, that is what I want to be. Amen? I want yeah. to determine me, my roles and my values by loving the Lord thy God first. Yeah, That's the hallelujah. first thing I want to do. Love the Lord thy God. With our, all that heart, with all that soul, and with all that might. But I want to read verse 6 because yes, it so coincides you, with um, verse 5. And it reads, And these words which I command thee this day, shall be in thine heart. Oh, yes, yes. That's important. Yes. Another part of the scripture, Pastor, the word says, hide the word. In that heart, yeah. That I might that not, not sin. sin. Yes, right, that's right. Yeah. Come on now. Now, question number six. I asked you, what was the answer that you gave to what you loved? What made you happy? Amen? And then number seven was, what did you hate? 
what you won't stand for or allow to happen in your life. I want you to turn to Romans chapter 12. Because question number 6 and question number 7 belong in Romans 12. Amen. Amen. Verse, Verse 9. New Testament, Romans chapter 12, verse 9, and it reads, Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Hallelujah. That's it's the telling New Testament. You, it's, New Testament. it's telling you to avoid evil. Yes. So what should you hate? Well, you should be hating evil. Sin. Man. Amen. Amen. And should love to do what? Good. Amen. 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 Question number eight. What did you determine that excited you? And drove you? What was it uh, you were passionate about? Do you remember that question? We'll turn to Matthew 6. Matthew 6, verse 21. Amen. And the word of God reads, and this is Jesus speaking, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Yeah, see? I asked you, what was you excited about? Huh? You, your treasure determines that. Whatever your answer is... That is where your treasure is. It's what you're passionate about. Yes. Amen? Amen? And number nine, final question, what did you decide that you were committed to? The results you must achieve no matter what the total outcome for your life, the person that you're committed to becoming. Mm -hmm. So no matter, what the, no matter what the circumstances are, yes. you are committed to becoming this person. Matthew 25, 21. Amen. New Testament, Matthew chapter 25, verse 21 reads, His Lord said unto him, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. What is my final outcome? What am I absolutely committed to becoming? I'm committed to becoming a vessel that hears the statement from God, Hallelujah. well done, thou good and faithful servant, Hallelujah. that you've been obedient to what I called you to do, Kofi and Michelle, and your name, and I want you to come on up yes. with me a little higher. Yes. You've been obedient. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the second thing we went over was the will of life. Can you give me two more? Yes. Will of life. Amen? Now, who remembers the will of life? I do. Yes. On this will of life, we had family relationships, physical we had spiritual life. We had emotional stability. We had financial status. We had mental health. And we had time management, right? And so the question was, where do you fit in these categories? We discovered that these were categories. Thank you. We discovered that these are categories. And we decided that physical was a category, right? We decided that spiritual was a category. And we asked the question, what is your percentage that you perceived that you were in your family life? What did you perceive you were in your physical body? What percentage of, of, of work did you need? Or what percentage of triumph do you believe that you had in these areas? And we discovered when I went first, I discovered that I believed that I was 50% on the spiritual Pastor, you remember what you were on the spiritual? I think 65 or 70. I don't remember. 65. I told you she was more spiritual than I was. And on the physical, I was, uh, what was I, 65%, right? And so on these categories, or in these categories rather, I said that I was 50% okay with God. 50% in my spiritual life. I could do better. So that means I, that means I had. I think we all can. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. That meant I had 50% more to progress in as it related to my spiritual life. Mm -hmm. So, we answered that question. Everybody was truthful. And then we discovered last week, not only should we measure this by our own mentality that we have currently, mm -hmm. but that we should measure this will of life by the word of God. Amen. By the word of God. Amen. Not by us and our mindset, but by the word of God. Amen. Amen. Now, in my perspective, I categorized mine as 50% in my spiritual life. I was physical. In my physical body, I was 65%. In my emotional stability, I was 65%. In my mental health, I was 
thought I was strong mentally, and my financial, because it's not all low, right? Right. And my financial status, I found that I was 45%, and my I rose up a little bit from that since the last time I gave my will, and my family relationships, family and relationships, I was at a 75. Now, what I want to confess to you is, last week, I told you and, and uh, repented and, and asked for you to understand my correction of my time management. Amen. And I was at 30% time management. But if you remember my object lesson here, I said be 10% better at something than you were the previous week. So I told you to go work on your roles that you would play and your categories. And I worked on my role and my category in the time management department. I believe that I rose up 10%. Amen. So I'm now at 40% Amen. better at my time management. Thank you very Amen. much. Amen. All right. And then we discovered that there's a professional life. Yeah. Then number three, running out of time here. Number three, I want to tell you we decided to, dis we discovered rather, that our progress was leading us to a map. And what do you know about a map? It tells you what? Where to go and where, to, you know, where to go and how to go and which direction to go in, correct? Amen. It gives you vision of where you're heading. If you're headed down 95 to a particular building, if you're going by the maps on your uh, mobile device, it might have that building right in front of you. Yeah. Amen? So a map gives you what? Direction. Direction. Yeah. Amen. And so we discovered that a map, in this case, was using massive action plan. So having a massive action plan was our map. Massive action. That means when you find out your vision and your purpose for your life, you're going to apply massive action to Absolutely. it to get forward in your progress. One of the things um, that I want to interject, Pastor Kofi, and that mm -hmm. is we talked a lot about the personal and the professional life, but one, another category that you can add is business, like for those who have their own business. I think you might have mentioned yes. that in one of the um, messages, but that's imperative that you can still use this map or this template for those who are business owners, amen, or entrepreneurs, or those who have a desire, amen, to um, have their own business. Absolutely, Amen. absolutely. Thank you. Turn to Jeremiah 2911. 29, Hallelujah. Because we remember we're working on a massive action plan, a vision for your life, right? The categories of your life that need improvement, right? And the roles of never ending improvement, Rone, that you would follow to get your map, right? To get your map in your direction. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah, the Old Testament, chapter 29, verse 11. And it reads this way from the King James translation. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. To give you an expected end. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To give you an expected end. So, can you give him a little feedback on that, Pastor? Yeah, so ultimately, like we've been talking about and discussing to write the vision down and make it plain for those who read it, can um, run after it, can go for it. Um, we also talked about that in writing the vision down that it gives us an opportunity to retain that which we've written and to have it before us. So when we look at Jeremiah 29, 11, and another translation is um, said this way, for I know the plans that I have for you to do you good to do you no harm for I know the expected end. So yes, we should have a vision and we should write it down. However, we should not be so consumed with what our vision and what our plan is that we don't allow God to come in by way of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes, yes. To change it. That, amen. Because oftentimes life gets interrupted. Yes. But are we willing to allow God's perfect plan be mapped out for our lives. Amen? Amen. But it doesn't mean that you don't have a plan or dream or vision and desire, but we want to be intentional. Amen? We want to be deliberate. Amen? About writing it down and carrying it out. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Love it. I love it. Thank you, Pastor. My pleasure. That's Thank wonderful. you. Thank you so much. God bless you too. Um, so, again, we're at the Will of Life. I believe that if you've not been following us, you got an understanding of what this is. 
for those of you all who have been following us, you know exactly what this is. Amen. But what I'd like to do is give you a piece to get to your map. You know, on the map, there's a key. There's a key on every map or like a treasure map or something like that. Turn on the back, like the bottom right down the corner. There'll be a key or something to explain what it is that different geographic things mean on your map or different words mean on your map. Well, I believe that these steps right here, eight steps to a turnaround, will be your road map to get to where you want to be. Amen? Now, what I have here is some stairs. Now, what I want you to understand about these stairs is now we have an ultimate vision for our lives. We have an ultimate purpose for our lives. Yeah. We have the reason why we're doing what we want to do or, or what we want to do. We haven't established what we want to do. We've also understood now that we have categories of our lives, spiritual life, mental, emotional stability, right? Time management, physical, family relationships, mental health, career, professional life, right? That was our will of life, and within it are our categories. But then we just took it a step further and understood that we need to play roles within these categories, mm -hmm. right? Within these categories. Yes. And so I gave the example of the role that I played in my spiritual category, and I called it spiritual guru or spiritual giant. Amen? Amen. Now, I told you it's not that I was a guru or giant, but those words make me laugh, and they make me want to spend time inside of the spiritual. I explained that sometimes when you go to read the Bible, you get tired, or you go to read the Bible while you're tired, which you should not do all the time, and you fall asleep or something like that. But what if you felt like you were a spiritual giant? Spiritual giants, I just can't ex expect, or should I say, perceive some of the people that I know, and I think highly of just sitting there falling asleep on the Bible. I mean, they might do it, but I just can't conceive that they do that. Amen? But if they do not, I imagine as a spiritual giant, they're upright and they're excited about getting into the Word so they can get it to us. Well, that's how I feel about being in my spiritual category. Amen? Amen. So, the bottom line is this. These are categories, but the roles you play were the role names. The roles of never-ending improvement. Amen. Amen. So I want to take you on a quick journey of the Rone. All right? Take you on a quick journey. First, you have the first step is the ultimate vision that you'll find right here on the stair step. Now, you can't get anywhere unless you know who you are and whose you are in Christ. Amen. You can't Praise move God. about in who you are unless you know why you are moving about. In that area. Amen. You have to have an ultimate why as to why you want to get where you want to be because why? The enemy, the devil, is going to challenge what you said you wanted. He's going to challenge what you said you deserve. He's going to challenge what you believe you need. And he's going to say you don't need that. And he's going to come and try to snatch it away from you. And what you're going to need is a strong why, a reason, a purpose for having that. So when he comes at you, you can fend him away with the word. Amen. Get thee what? Behind me, Satan. Hallelujah. It says, the Bible says, resist the devil and he will do what? Flee. Flee. From you. All right? And so the why gives you the reason for the devil to flee. Amen? Then we have the Rone, the third step. The Rone is the role of never-ending improvement. Roles within these categories that you will play and you will never stop doing it. As an example, in your family life, you will never stop being a father or a mother the, for those of you who are parents. You will never stop being a child for those of you all who, are, who have parents. You follow me? You'll never stop being God's child. Amen. You'll never stop needing to do better in your finances. Amen. You'll never stop needing to do better in your time management. Amen. You always need to improve your financial status in order to live with inflation. So you see... Rone is roles of never-ending improvement. So I'm a spiritual giant, and I'm always going to be improving that. That's the concept I'm going for. And so, do you have anything to add, Pastor? No, thank you. Amen. So what I want to do is take you to an example of this particular category. I'm going to pick a different category this week. 
I'm going to pick financial status, okay? Now, my financial status, I gave my number. I don't want to repeat it right now. But I gave that number in my financial status. But in that financial status, I have a role that I play. Amen? So what I'd like to do for you is tell you how I want you to create your stuff, okay? Your stuff meaning your categories and your roles, okay? Now, this is what I'm about to tell you I want you to do in each category here. So it's going to take you some time. I warned you at the outskirt of this meeting uh, a couple of weeks back that it would take a lot of writing. I want you to get your favorite music, sit down after this broadcast the next couple of days, and write out your ultimate vision. If you have not done that, write your ultimate vision. Amen? Amen. And let me um, just add Amen. this Thank you, Pastor. Pastor. Thank you, that I encourage you not to be um, dismayed or don't even allow yourself to be discouraged when you look at all of this. It is a lot. It entails a lot. But I have faith in knowing that you can do this. Amen. That you can accomplish it. You are creative. Amen. That you're created in God's likeness and in his image. And so I want to encourage those who are visual learners like myself, I'm a visual learner, yes. that um, you don't have to limit it to in doing it th this way. Absolutely. It's just a template for you to follow. Absolutely. Like if you go to the part like, um, do I see it? The exercise? The physical, the yes. physical piece? Mm -hmm. You might find a picture of some weights and, or a little sticker, like go to the arts and crafts store, the dollar store, and you can put weights there, or you can put a jump rope there just to encourage you. Amen. Yes, so, yes. Or um, picture the your favorite person that's yeah. put <laughs> together the way you like right. them to be. Um, for your spiritual piece, you can take a, a sticker or a picture of a Bible or an ink pen and a journal. Amen. Just to, you know, make it creative. It's yours. So make it be um, encouraging to you. Amen. Yes. When you would have a desire that when you see it right before you, like, oh, yeah. I need to look into my journal. I need to add to it today. Yes. Amen. Thank you. That's exactly what I'm saying. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes. My pleasure. Amen. So in my category of financial, I call it financial freedom, okay? Yes. Now remember, as I read this, Pastor, as I read this congregation, I am saying to you, this is the ultimate code. Yes. This is what I want to be. Amen? I want to be. This is my ultimate vision for my financial life. Okay, yeah. I am the protector of my family assets. I have been divinely placed in this family with Lachelle and I and put in position of a place of wealth. Right. We are comfortable. We are well fed. Can't you tell? Can't you tell? We are well dressed and well set. Right. We are proper in our stewardship over our finances. Amen. Huh? We are creative. Right. We have more time, more energy because we have more money. Amen? Amen. This is the ultimate vision. All right? I am the custodian of the way of life for my family. Amen? We are blessed financially because Jesus lives in our hearts. The question is, why do I want this? The ultimate purpose. The ultimate purpose is I absolutely must remain a good uh, I must remain in a good position of stewardship yes. over God's finances Amen. over my family's wealth. Amen. I must. Trust that That's is right. why I need that ultimate vision. Amen. These are monthly. Uh, there are monthly obligations. People and places and organizations, right? Churches. We need to give to. Amen. I'll say that again. There are people we need to give to. Churches we need to give Amen. to. Organizations we need to give to. You follow me? Causes we need to give to. And we must be able to represent God well in our finances as we give to them. Amen. That is why I want to be the ultimate person. Now, in this, Rone was the third. You approved that message? I like that. Rone was roles of what? Never-ending improvement. So what are my roles? Remember, I talked about roles being juicy, right? I told you to size up the words, not just say, I want to do better in my finances. But... Create roles that when you hear the name and the terminology, you step into that role like Denzel stepped into his character or Tom Hanks stepped into his character if you refer back to our previous teaching. Yes. Amen? Amen? All right. Here's some of my roles I play. I'm the custodian of cost. <laughs> See how it sounds? It makes me laugh. You laugh at his own jokes. I know, but it ain't even a joke. It's really like, think about that. I'm the custodian of cost. Huh? 
Yeah, that's right. I'm a financial genius. Amen. I'm a financial genius, okay? I'm the protector of the family assets, all right? Amen. I'm a fortunate financier, okay? These are all roles that I play Amen. inside of my will of finances. And I am a wealth wizard, okay? I'm a wealth wizard. Now, when you get finished owning who you are, your roles that I just talked about, the next step is I want you to focus on those roles. One, two, three. The fourth step up our stairway is the role of focus, all right? I want you to take three things. Three. You can do four. You can do two. But three things that you're thriving off of, okay? What are three things you can do to make sure that as an example of my situation, which one I want to pick? Pick one that you want me to be this week, Ms. Bryant. Which one of these guys you want me to be this week? You put my glasses on. Yeah. I'm giving her the choice. That was you funny. Generous giver. Okay. I'm a generous giver. Okay? I'm a generous giver this week. Alright? So the focus is what what do I need? What in my life, what are my three to thrive goals, my two to thrive, my four to thrive goals? Four things that I think if I do that, I will be a generous giver. Mm -hmm. You follow that? Here are the three. I have to have my savings in your savings account, right? I have to have a budget. Amen. Because I have to know what I'm spending Amen. and how I'm spending. Amen. And I have to have ultimate stewardship. Amen. Right? So those are my three to thrive. The three things that I must focus on to make sure that my role as generous giver is what it needs to be. And so, can, oh, go ahead. Absolutely. And so I want to add to that as it relates to the generous giver, giving part because remember part of this is that we are taking the word of God and we are matching it. Like the everything that he just said, how does that match to the word of God? Yes. Well, there's a scripture that says God loves a cheerful giver. So if we're going to give, then we need to give cheerfully. Amen. Yes. Another scripture that I can think of is that everything that we do, it, it needs to be done unto the Lord. Amen. Yes. And so those are two scriptures right there that you can use. Go ahead. Amen. Thank you, Thank you so much. My pleasure. And the resources that you have, the resources are things that will get you to and through your three to thrive. Mm -hmm. So the resources of my savings. What are resources do I have to save? Mm -hmm. What resources do I have to budget? Mm -hmm. What resources do I have to maintain stewardship? Mm -hmm. Remember the three I just gave you. So as an example, here are my th here are my uh, resources. I have Money Matter software, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of old, but I like it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have uh, financial budget classes, mm -hmm. right? For the budget. Right? <laughs> we have the Bible. Amen. Okay? Because the Bible has all things finance in it. Amen. Right? Will a man do what? Rob God. Will he do it? All right? And so I have an expense tracking app. Right? So these are things, resources I have Amen. to keep Beautiful. me on track like to that. what I'm focused on. I'm going to say that again. Financial budget and all of that are resources. Amen. That's what I have to stay focused those focus through three things, three things I had on my roles of never ending improvement because I'm steeped in my purpose and because that purpose supports an ultimate vision. Right. I Amen. hope you can see that. And then finally, we go to your 30 day, your 90 day, and your one year. Now, what did I tell you in the beginning we were going to do? Snatch back your year from the devil. Remember that? Okay. So in my 30 days, this is what I will do with my resources and how I will use my focus. I will say this, to have X amount of dollars in my savings account, each savings account, to have money saved in each account that I have. There's one savings and then there's accounts, right? And then there's investments, okay? So 30 days is I want to put something in each of those, okay? Okay. All right, here we go. To have income set aside for all of our needs, like gas and, you know, uh, lunch for the week, all that. That's all within a budget, right? All within my resources of having my budget. And so that 30-day graduates to a 90-day. So what are my 90 days? Okay, now my 90-day goes higher. Mm -hmm. To have a higher amount in each account. 
You follow me? Yes. To have a higher spending allowance for things that I want. All right? Now, why do I want this? To demonstrate excellent stewardship over our affairs. See, every time you say you want to do something, why don't you, why don't you do this? Establish a why you want yeah, to do amen. it. Okay? Amen. This is what I am and what I want to be. This is why I want it. Amen? Then you're going to graduate to a six-month process. Amen. Right? And then finally... A 90-day process, right? I'm sorry, I, I apologize. 90, then 60. Right, 90, then 60, and then what? One, one year. year. Mm -hmm. And so in one year, I want to have this amount K, all right? Thousands, right? It could be millions if y'all want to give me some. I mean, I'm really down with it. I'm just trying to be realistic this time, okay? But to have broke point, a broke point is an average of, let's say, if Corona virus takes over again or something tragic happens again to be able to do six months to a year of living expense without having to be uh, employed, okay? Because remember what 220 did to us. It stifled us in a certain way because we weren't prepared for what happened to us. And many of us were laid off and many of us were uh, fired and many of us lost our jobs and many of us, uh, our hours got cut or something like that, whereby we just could not keep up. But what if you had a broke point, a point that you had set up where you were working on it all year long in this particular category of financial? You were working on it all year long that at the end of the year, at the end of this year coming back to 2021, when it's about to be 2022, your year and what you have in the bank account and what you have saved up in each savings account that you have will be beautiful yeah. because you would have planned it from this point that we are today. Yeah. I just want to um, say um, to the person or individuals that when you look at that, again, don't be discouraged. Discouragement is by choice. Amen. Use the word to be inspired by it. Amen. Amen. Let me also add to that, that as it relates to the finances, you might be saying or thinking, well, I just can't save. Eh. So as a man, think of this. You can save. I want to encourage all of us that there is no amount that's too little or too much that you can't save. Amen. It doesn't matter if it's one cent. You might laugh and say, mm -hmm. one cent? What is one cent? Well, one cent is just that. It's one cent. Yes. But then the next time, you may be able to add three cents to that one cent, and now you have four cents. Um, and I can speak on it from a personal experience and pers right. personal, te te pers personal testimony as a witness that um, I guess the line of work that I'm in or been in when I first started out over 30 years ago and retired, bless the Lord, three years ago, back in the world, but by choice, that when I used to go to the bank every two weeks, and sometimes the only thing I would put in my savings account is $2. Yeah, that's the truth, $2, sometimes $5, but I always saved, and it added up. How and sometimes you when you did it? And so sometimes <laughs> this, um, the tellers would say, really, you you going to put $2 in your savings account? And I would smile like I was putting two hundred dollars. Like, yeah, two dollars like that. And I meant it, and I didn't touch it. And so, um, and it adds up. So anyway, just be encouraged, be inspired by the word of God always. Amen. If you say you're gonna start when I get this and when I do that, then most likely you'll never start. So why not start today? Right now. Right now. Amen. Right now. Start right now. Amen. And this is where I'm going with this whole concept. And I apologize for the length of it. But the bottom line to your ultimate vision and your ultimate purpose, right, was for you to come up with what you want to your ultimate self to be like. Well, let me tell you something, family. It doesn't happen overnight. No, it doesn't. It doesn't happen in a week. How long did it take you to get to where you are now? How long did it get you to be where you are now? So it cannot happen overnight for you to change that way. Instead, I believe it's a project. Look at yourself as a project. I have looked at myself as a project, and I don't feel sorry for myself. Amen? I don't mean that negatively. But see, Thank a project you. is every task or a task that we plan to undergo, right? 
that would take more than a series of events to bring it to its total fruition. So, in other words, if I have a lot of things to do, that's a project, okay? So, in my quest to be a better father, I have a lot of things to do. So, I need to write a project plan for being a father. In my finances, I have to write a project plan for my finances. In my spiritual life, a project plan to increase in my finances. Amen? And so the projects lead to monthly goals. Monthly goals lead to weekly goals. You see how this is working? And weekly goals lead to what? Daily goals. And daily goals lead to hourly goals. So remember... 30-day goals, month, 90-day goals, quarterly, six months to a year, right? So what I'm explaining to you is this. Take out your planners, okay? I have my planner. Pastor got her planner. Right in my planner with my name on it, my chapter. <laughs> and she has a plan. She has a few. She just bought a nice, beautiful planner, a Christian planner. I know I like color. Yeah, and a Christian planet, of which, uh, if you want, I can ask her to put it in the uh, column okay. so you can, you know, get one yourself. Uh, but nevertheless, take the time, develop an app, use an app on your phone or in your iPhone or uh, in your Android phone, right? Android, the Play Store. Right. And so use that and develop a strategy for your life, an ultimate vision. Develop an ultimate purpose. Some roles that you will never end. Stop playing those roles. You'll never stop being the beautiful person that you are. Amen. 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 And you put your focus on those roles, right? Use your resources to get better at those roles. Set your goals 30 days, 90 days, 60, and a year until you become the person that God had for you to be. Amen. 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 So this is what our goal was. Our goal was for you to take the will of life. Examine who you were from God's perspective, and as you got your percentage, work on it by using your planner to rise up with a plan, Amen. a map, a massive action plan. Yeah. Remember, a project is multiple things, yeah. right? You cannot take a project and finish it in one day. Amen. You have to break it down over time. Amen, amen. Thank you. And what I hear is Hebrews 11, 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Amen. Hallelujah. And if nothing else that you remember about what was said, go back and replay it. No, actually, what I was going to say is make sure what you're doing and how you're doing it, that you take the word of God and you line it up with what you're doing. Amen. Because ultimately, it's what does the word say. Amen. 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 One of the things that... um. I'm so appreciative that my husband does all often with me is when I'm having a moment, <laughs> he'll say to me, what does the Bible say? Uh, you want to please God? And so thank you for that, Pastor Kofi. I appreciate it. Um, I love you. God bless you. I love you too. Please God begin to for you. doing like this. I was trying to be, you know. Yes. Yeah, so I, I apologize. You. No, no, no. You didn't do anything wrong. I thank you again for your time. We thank you for your witness of staying with us Amen. in spite of the lengthiness of that. Because, again, sometimes when things are difficult and they cause us pain, it's hard to sit and watch. It Amen. Is. It it's is. hard to sit and watch. But you got through it. Amen. Amen. And hopefully when you're ready to write down what we wrote on this board, you'll look at YouTube again and see the process one more time. You don't have to listen to the whole thing. Just go back and rewind to the parts that you might have missed. Where this diagram is here. The Wheel of Life. And the eight steps to the turnaround, which are right here. Amen. 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 All right. Well, if you have joined us and you do not know the Lord Amen. Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, here's what I want to do for you. I want to invite you yes. to accept him in your life so Hallelujah. that you can start to have an ultimate vision. Yes. That you can have an ultimate purpose, which is him which is Christ, yes, Jesus, right? You, who will help you play your roles of never-ending improvement, who will always help you stay focused yes. and always give you resources to get that focus taken care of. And he will always allow you to make goals so that you can get where you want to be. But you have to get to know him first. Hallelujah. Amen? You have to accept him as your Lord and Savior. So if you don't or have not done that, repeat after me. Father, 
I come to you right now in the name of Thank Jesus, you, asking you to save me, save me from myself Thank and you. save me from others. Save me from the destruction Thank of what it's like not to know you, not to know you in a coronavirus pandemic you, is a, uh, a suicidal thing. But I thank you right now for saving me from the suicide of the corona experience. And I thank you for allowing me to gravitate towards you, my Lord and Savior. And I ask you to come into my life and save me. Sit upon the throne of my heart. Be the head of my life. And direct me to where I need to be. Give me an ultimate vision for my life so that I may be a different person Thank you, in 2021 Thank you, than I ever was in 2020. In Jesus' name, I'm saved. I thank God for it. Thank God for being Amen. saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for being Hallelujah. saved. Hallelujah. 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 For those of you who have been encouraged by the vaccine series, I bid you a farewell on this particular session, and I thank God for you. If you have been encouraged. If you have decided to do better at what you're called to do, yeah. to be a better you this year, the rest of 2020, and straight forth into 2021, I ask you to say this prayer with us too. Mm -hmm. Father, Father, in the name, in of, the Jesus, name of Jesus, you have given me, given me a, vision. a vision. You have told, you, me, Lord, you told to me to write the vision, write the vision and, make and make it plain so that they that so read it May run with it. Father, help me write the vision for my life. Help me establish a purpose for my life. Help me play the roles that you gave me in my categories. Help me with my resources. Help me with my, my, my goals to reach a better me. Mainly, God, for you and then for my brother. In Jesus' name I pray name and do I give pray. thanks. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. If you accepted Jesus Christ, we want to hear from you. Go directly to the website, www.ilm247.org. Amen. The telephone number to the ministry is listed there. You can put it in live chat. Amen. We want to connect you with this ministry, Inspire Life Ministry, or we want to encourage you to go to be enough to be a part of another ministry amen where they are teaching the word of god where yes. jesus christ is the center amen. amen god bless you we love you but more importantly god, god loves you. you peace take care god bless, god bless you